Hey guys, so this is our UPBL season three, uh, we format we three match versus JCG Music in the North Melbourne Kangas Cons. They're one on one, we're one on one. Um, I hope we're looking to pull up a dub here. Um, if we don't, what we wanted to not very optimal, especially going for the playoff race, which eh, a playoff race isn't a big deal right now. Because it's still week three, but it'd still be nice to get positive differential or positive uh, record. So, uh, they brought pretty much everything I expected. No Liopard. Well, okay, I didn't expect Liopard, but I knew he should. And him not bringing it, it's not a shock, but he's going to lose to Boldegeist. Uh, I just have to weak Corv weaken Corviknight. Uh, Vanilla's not a big deal, honestly, because I have Cyndiscorch. Cyndiscorch actually can do a lot of work here. It actually walls a Serena. It beats Vanillix and it, it walls of Vanillix and it beats Gardevoir unless it's Psy Shock. Um, <laughs> Corviknight. <sighs> so Corviknight's gonna be situational. Um, Beware can break it. Beware's actually really good here too. Cause this with combat, cause even Gardevoir quad resisting doesn't. It's not bulky enough to take it. So, uh, if I, if Kamo is defensive, which I'm pretty sure it is, then he'll definitely uh, be not speedy. <laughs> but where's he gonna outspeed? Uh, Coolfish. Coolfish only helps me versus uh, Dragon Dance Kamo, which he's, or actually preventing rocks, which is what I'm gonna. That's why I lead it. I'm gonna lead it here because it's just a hollow lead. Because it can prevent the webs, not webs, uh, uh, rocks, and prevent the veil from Vanillix, prevent any setup from Corvid Knight. You stop a lot. And, uh, yeah, I'm trying to look at the ball check if uh, it can prevent anything else. I guess, uh, calm my guard of war. But that's unlikely. Um,. Seagulls also done me good here. The only thing he doesn't have super effective coverage for is Gardevoir, which does not appreciate hits anyway, especially without reliable war covering, unless it's defensive. We wish. Which is definitely unlikely. Um, so, uh, Portugal's definitely win con. We can go overnight with Sigleth in particular, which is probably the easiest way to break uh, through it, but where can also do it. Anyway, uh, so lead, uh, I lead top, uh, not toxic picks. Uh, Coolfish, because Coolfish helps me, okay, whatever, uh, Coolfish prevents rocks from Kamo, uh, unless it's max speed Jolly, uh, if he's max speed Jolly, then and when's the speed die, then he can get his rocks up, but I doubt he's that. So, I just taunt here, it's pretty free, there's no reason not to click it, even if he does swap into Vanillix, which is really predictable, but... Uh, I taunt, which only prevents a uh, veil. Uh, I reveal Black Sludge, not surprising. Uh, I go Send a Scorch, it's my answer to this. Uh, I could double on Kamo, but I dropped not to this early. Uh, I have a win con, there's no reason to potentially throw anything out on the double. Especially when it's not necessary. Sigla is perfectly fine here. Uh, Air Slash is free, but I opt to Heat Wave on the Corviknight. Because Heat Wave is going to weaken it even better for Poltergeist. And actually, two KOs. It could two who hit KOs for death. So I was like, Heat Wave, he has one swap in. So even Gardevoir coming in there took a lot. So, uh, in which he was going to go back. He's going to go back into Gardevoir here. Which is cool if he's like live for because he has the, he traces the Magic Guard. But I got my Sin Discourse because it's heavy due to boost. It's not going to take rocks. Uh, 18%. Just reveals that he's not specs, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I double into Sigleth on the Kamo, uh, because Kamo is really obvious here. Uh, I slash on the Quagsire, because it's a free slash. Basically, because I air slash and energy ball killed Quagsire, energy ball killed too, but it's no reason to go for Sauce. Uh, this shows he's Scarf, by the way, like almost 100%. Uh, he doubles on the Sin Scorch, which is a solid play on his part, because Sin Scorch definitely might swap in there. I go Grim, because there's not much Kamo can really do unless he's Taunt. I'm pretty sure this thing gets Taunt. Um, 
Even with like Iron Head, it's not gonna do much. A uh, Corviknight. Again, I wasn't worried about Corviknight coming in here because I have Taunt on my Grim Snarl. It basically prevents it from getting a Roost off, which is the only reason he'd bring it in here. Uh, he jumps out a Guard of War there, which is okay because I see my wind gone now. Basically, I sat Grim Snarl to the Moon Blast. Uh, get this uh, light screen up so Poltergeist can come in. Easily live Moon Blast, takes 26. Special Track Drop, I actually thought really did matter. I thought that was really big because uh, I didn't know if I'd kill Serena. But uh, he goes back to Gorvin Knight there. Basically, just sacking it. But okay, so it was big because it gave him actually a chance to beat me in the sense that it can beat this Poltergeist and then potentially beat me later. But, uh, I double smash, because I figure he's going to swap for one and sack Corviknight. Uh, and two, I knew even if he opted to stay in, Moonblast did not kill me, even after at minus two, because neutral did 26, therefore the plus two, or minus two in my case, would be 52. And even if he got a high roll, that's a nasty roll if it's going from 52 to 62. <laughs> um, so... Basically, we smashed there, and yeah, it's, it's over at this point. There's, yeah. <laughs> His team, basically, I knew Poltergeist would win from the very beginning. Uh, there was just, yeah, there's not much he could do, and he just forfeits. Which, I mean, I get it. He had, he couldn't do anything, but forfeiting, just let the mon get kills. Like, I, I still add them, because it's always, uh, Poltergeist get the kills. So, um... Win 5 week 3. Uh, JCJ actually drops the week after this uh, for Zeus. And, and made, by that, I mean Zeus picks up. So, uh, we don't face Zeus, which is cool. Because I'm 7-1. Say for 7-6 right now versus him. So, don't have to keep that positive versus him. <laughs> um, yeah. Again, uh, Poltergeist was just too good here, honestly. And... I feel bad in the sense that there's just not much JCJ could have done about it. Uh, from the very beginning, like, at lead preview, you had to have Lyapard. Like, in prep, he could have done something about it. But because he didn't do something about it in prep, the team, therefore, was just too weak to bowl to guys, honestly. Uh, I think he probably was expecting Cloyster over bowl to guys, just because bowl to guys is you, you and Cloyster's OU, and I legitimately think that's it, but, uh, Poltergeist is definitely the way, like, it was, he had no, re I had no reason to go, not go Poltergeist, uh, it broke through everything on his team, except for Death Corviknight, and Death Corviknight, one, probably couldn't kill me either, and two, it was pretty easily weakened, like, pretty much everything on my weekend team weakened it in some way, the only thing was, po uh, Pope Snarl. Uh, but where else been? I hit with a banded CC. Uh, Quillfish was taunt with plus scald. Uh, Sinus Scorch had super effective. Sinus Scorch, uh, not Sinus Scorch, Sinus Scorch. Sigilith was super effective with a uh, heat wave. The Poltergeist was wing gone. Grimstone was the only thing I really couldn't touch it. So, Discord might open here and it might show up, but I don't think it does. But, uh, cause he just finished downloading again. But, um, the only thing he really could have done maybe get Veil up with Vanillix, which definitely would have helped. Like, Serena would have lived then, more than likely. Uh, if Serena had lived, then he could have power whipped me and killed me. Uh, definitely would have prevented the sweep, but uh, I, I wouldn't have set up with it then. So, like, in that aspect, he could have prevented it, but could he have really? No. Because I just wouldn't have set up if he had Veil up. Um, he was also surprised in the... Because here in the chat he said, Have fun, dude. No Flapple. And originally I did have Flapple. Uh, but I decided that him having Corviknight, beating the biggest one, but even outside of Corviknight, uh, Kamo, I can't even click Grab Apple against him. He has three resists and one quad resist. Uh, Serene Tango appreciate it. Even Kamo, can, I can break through if it's weakened, but... Just the Corviknight, which is too big. And I think he was really scared of uh, Flapple. Dragon Dance. Dragon Dance was the only thing that would have been okay. 
but I had to lock myself in the uh, dragon move at some point, which basically means Corviknight still walls me, uh, and I could not do anything to Corviknight, period. I have to be, like, live for Adamant plus one, and I'd still do, like, 50 to him. Like, but if it was physically defensive for that, which it actually probably was, well, I don't remember heat wave damage. I did like 60, but I don't remember the calc on it. I think that showed he was spadef, so he definitely wasn't physically defensive for Flapple. Probably because it could because Corviknight walled it either way, so he didn't need it. Um, very good game to him. Like, just because the, the differential, like, he made solid doubles. Uh, the double from right. Also, the swap into Kamo was smart there. Uh, he didn't really have another swap in, but him getting rocks up here was a very solid play. Like, I technically could have stayed in, but Silas was fine here. Um, Corvin Knight was definitely his best play either way. Like, he just had to hope I didn't heat wave, honestly. He didn't swap into it, and even if he stayed in with Kamo, it wasn't that bad. Because Kamo couldn't do much to me. So ultimately, just right after I could just air slash it again. And then he could make this swap into Gorbin Knight, which would be a very solid play if he did make that series of turns. But I didn't have him like that. Um, I know one play earlier. My play right there was just, yeah, I kind of kept momentum. Uh, he had to do that. And I think Veil here. Okay, no, no, no. A double into Kamo was a good play. But, um, I think Veil there was better if he had it. Then, because he actually, because I think he should have recognized at this point his Corver Knight's weekend. Uh, and that's the only thing Boldergeist needed. So, he's really weak to Boldergeist at this point. He's gonna have to keep, uh, Overnight weekend uh, healthy or have veil up and he didn't have either. I think that's why you should have veiled there. You actually had a chance there, maybe, if you veiled because either way, I would, I yeah, I would. <laughs> if he scarf, then it's a big deal because then I have free Sigilith, which I would find out if he because well, I guess I wouldn't figure it out. I was gonna say if, if I hit hill first, but like, for one. He's faster for two. Uh, he's ice type. He wouldn't get hit by it. Uh, because he's ice type. So, um, Veil there, I think, would tell for your play. If he had it again. He might not have. Because I think he was Scarf, but he definitely should probably have it. He doesn't have any other coverage, to be honest, to have it. To not have it. So, yeah. Um, it was a 5 0 in the end. But, I don't think it's that bad. So, it's game sim, and this will be going up today at 12. Um, yeah, and we're 2 and 1, and next week's versus Ivy, and the Houston Tyrannicans, they're 2 and 1 as well. That'll be going up sometime this week, maybe. Maybe next week, I'm not 100% sure. If we'll get it when we see it, and see you guys then.